In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Church of Resurrection. Today, as we gather together, saying goodbye to our brother, Mark Lawrence, let us entrust him unto the merciful hands of our loving Father, with the hope that he will share in the resurrection of Jesus. Let us first acknowledge our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant, Mark Lawrence, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice. Then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, yet died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we are now justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath? Indeed, if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, how much more, once reconciled, will we be saved by his life? Not only that, but we also boast of God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, Praise to you, Lord Jesus the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but 
77 times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had him put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgive you your entire debt because you begged me too. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives his brother from his heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. First, I would like to say my condolences to everybody, to the grieving family and friends of our brother Mark Lawrence. We join you in praying for the repose of his soul with the hope that he may have eternal life. For us humans, death is not only a sad reality, but also is a mystery that is filled with the unknown. But we are not just humans. We are Christians. We are people who believe that there is a God. And most of all, we believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, whom the Father sent so that through him, we may all be saved in spite of all our imperfections, our shortcomings and sins. And that is why the second reading tells us about hope. That is one of the strongest characteristics of us as Christians. We are a people of hope. And this hope does not disappoint, the reading says, because we know that the love of God has been poured out to us in Jesus Christ. The theme of our readings is forgiveness. Why? Because as we sang in the psalm, our God is a merciful God. Without God's mercy, we are all hopeless. But Jesus said, as you have been forgiven, you also must forgive. First reading tells us that we should not hold on to hatred or anger. The gospel is very, very interesting. You know, uh, Peter asked Jesus, Lord, how often must I forgive my brother if he wrongs me? as often as seven times. But you know, during biblical times, the custom was you must forgive your brother three times. That was their custom. 
three times. That's what they got used to. And so, you know, only three times. It's like baseball, you know. Three times and you're out, right? And then the fourth time, that, that was their custom. So Peter must have been bragging to Jesus when he said seven. He doubled the three and topped it up with another one. So he was saying seven times? I probably was surprised at the answer of Jesus. But I was wondering why, why Peter asked Jesus that question. How often do I have to forgive? I was wondering who offended Peter. <laughs> His mother-in-law? No. <laughs> but there, there was this joke that uh, said that the reason why Peter denied Jesus three times was because to get even with him because he healed his mother-in-law in the, in, the, in the Bible. Now, don't believe that. Don't believe that joke, okay? That's not true. You know, Peter loved his mother-in-law and Jesus cared. That's why he healed her. But the, uh, the answer of Jesus to the question was, I, I'm not saying seven times. I say 77 times. But it doesn't, it doesn't mean that 77 and then on the 78th, okay, you stop. Jesus simply meant, just don't stop forgiving. Just keep forgiving. Just as you are being forgiven by the Father all the time, anytime, no matter how serious, no matter how, how many you know, times you offended him, God is always willing to forgive because God, again, is a loving and merciful God. It's never easy, I know. Forgiving those who have hurt us is never easy. You know, the bigger the hurt, the deeper the wound, the wound, the more difficult it is to forgive. But as Christians, we are called to forgive. Maybe it doesn't mean totally blotting out the memories because it's, it's almost humanly impossible to forgive, uh, I mean, to forget, you know, what has been done to us. But maybe forgiving means, you know, not acting out of the memory of the pain, of the injustice. I always feel that holding on to anger is like self-imprisonment. We lose our sense of freedom because we get controlled by that pain, but by that desire for, for, for vengeance, by that anger. You know, we become prisoners of anger. So when we let go, you know, then somehow we are set free. I know you've done that. You probably have done that. And the moment you just let go, you feel better. And the weight of the anger that's pressing us down is gone. And I believe that's one of the things that Jesus wants to give to us. Let us all remember that Jesus died to save all of us. All of us. He said that. In, his, in the Gospel of St. John. I came not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me, he said. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I will not lose anyone, like not a single soul, of those whom he entrusted to me. That's why he came. It is not for his own glorification. It is to save all of us. So Jesus died for Mark Lawrence. Jesus died for you and me. Jesus taught us how to pray. Remember, you know, this prayer, the most popular prayer that we Christians have, the Our Father. You know, we pray it every day, a lot of times. And sometimes the problem is, it becomes so mechanical that we pray and sometimes we don't even like, you know, 
or contemplate the words. But the words of the prayers are beautiful. Especially the, the second part, when we ask for forgiveness for our sins. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We ask for forgiveness. We dare to ask for forgiveness. And we say, as we forgive those who offend us, those who hurt us, those who sin against us, but do we really forgive from the heart? We as Christians must recognize that we only deserve to be forgiven if we forgive others. Just as we need forgiveness, we need to forgive. He meant, Jesus meant, that we must forgive. So as we take our brother Mark to his final resting place, let us pray that whatever sins or failures he might have committed, that he may find God's mercy. He may be forgiven by our merciful and forgiving God. Let us not forget. We also need God's mercy. And so we all have to pray for ourselves that we may learn to forgive while we beg God for forgiveness for our own shortcomings and sins. In the end, we know God's mercy prevails. Amen. Please rise. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. For Mark, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he now be admitted to the company of saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our brother Mark, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen a lot to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer. For our departed brother Mark and all who have died, cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Mark, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty in our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For even though by our own fault we perish, yet by your compassion and your grace, when seized by death according to our sins, we are redeemed through Christ's great victory and with him called back into life. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. <clears throat> holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down the Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Save us, Savior of the world Who by your cross and resurrection You have set us free You have set us free Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, Edward, his assistant, and all the clergy, remember your servant, Mark, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with his son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, so we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For communion, those who are Catholics and are ready to receive communion may come forward and receive communion. Those who are not ready and those who are not Catholics, you're also welcome to come forward. Please cross yourselves this way and uh, we will say a prayer for you.
instrument of your peace. Make me an instrument of your of your peace. 
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant us strengthened by it, our brother Mark may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Mark. And now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see him again and enjoy his friendship. Although we will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another with our faith in Jesus Christ. that my Redeemer lives, the one who calls me home. I long to see God face to face, to see with my Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Mark in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for all the blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise, your servant, and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Amen. We now take the greetings of Mark to his eternal, uh, to his proper resting place. to the Lord. 
his hand. 